So in this video, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the Pentel GlideWrite series of ballpoint pens. This is a modern ballpoint pen that uses a super low viscosity oil-based ink. So basically anything that uses an oil-based ink is called a ballpoint. But when you think of a ballpoint, you might think of an old school ballpoint. That's like a big crystal or a paper mate where the ink is really thick and has a lot of drag as you're writing with it. Again, it has that old school feel to it. The GlideWrite is a super low vis viscosity ballpoint ink. Uh, so it's much more akin to something like the Pilot Acro or the uh, Uniball or Uni Mitsubishi Jetstream. Both of those are ballpoints, but when you write with them, you don't think like, hey man, this is one of those really draggy, old school, thick ballpoints. You know, one of those like pens that have been around since the 70s that, again, have a lot of functionality to them, but you get a really thick, draggy feel to it and that sort of light color normally associated with a classic ballpoint. That's not what we find in the GlideWrite. Uh, the companies, they call this a low viscosity ballpoint ink, so it's not as thick as a traditional ballpoint ink. Uh, the GlideWrite itself is called a super low viscosity ballpoint ink, but the difference between low and super low and ultra low or whatever, that's just marketing. There's no standard for ink viscosity in the marketplace. So the GlideWrite is available right now in two different pens from what I've seen. This is the standard GlideWrite from Pentel. I bought it in a six pack, but it's available in a bunch of different packs. Here's what it looks like. You get uh, two black pens, a red, a blue, a green, and the purple. Uh, it's a 1.0 millimeter medium. And then basic features, it's uh, super low viscosity ballpoint ink. They call the ink the Technoflow formula. Again, that doesn't really mean anything. It's just what Pentel calls it. And then, uh, you know, some stuff about the design. It's latex-free. It uses the BXTL10 refills. Here it is. It's an all-plastic pen. It uses a sort of milk, milky plastic, which is pretty cool. We have a nice rubberized grip. The grip is basically made into the plastic barrel, which is quite nice. There's that GlideWrite logo. Plastic clip, kind of swoopy here. Pentel does that a lot. Standard click button. The button is on the wide side. Again, that's kind of a trademark thing from Pentel these days. And then uh, not too much else to it. It is refillable. It can be a little hard to open this up, uh, but if you give this a, a real hard turn at first, you'll see there is a refill in here. It is refillable and uh, it won't fall out, right? It's a pressure fit. So you just push it out then you give it a tug. And if you look at it, you could see it is a ballpoint ink. Clearly when you see this thin plastic barrel, it's a ballpoint ink. They used to be metal, but now they're primarily plastic, but it'll be very thin like this. Uh, the ink, as you write with it, you'll see it definitely doesn't drain as slowly as a standard ballpoint. The low viscosity formulas, they don't last as long as a ballpoint pen typically does. So that's just a function of the ink. The ink is a thinner substance and you uh, put more of it down relative to the size of the refill as you write. You know, an old school ballpoint will last longer than one of these. And then a gel or a rollerball pen will last even less than one of these ballpoints. The GlideWrite is also sold in the, this it's called the GlideWrite Executive. It's an executive style pen, which we've talked about many times on this channel. And basically an executive pen, uh, at least to me, it's a metal pen that is in some way an upgrade version of a standard pen. They usually almost always have the same name, but the executive is either called the executive pen or the premium or the premier or something like that. The pens use the same ink and the same refill, but the executive gets a nicer body. So in this, we move to metal barrel, metal grip with those, uh, those dimples there. Looks a little bit like a golf ball maybe. Metal front piece metal clip and a metal button so it's fully metal it has a uh, sort of a satin finish it's it's like okay quality i'm not definitely not blown away with this there's a lot of executive pens that are much nicer than this one but i think it sells for maybe uh maybe seven or eight dollars so it's not particularly expensive in the scheme of things 
it's definitely not as nice as the uh, Pentel Energel alloy, which is kind of the standard for uh, an affordable executive pen. Uh, Pentel, I guess, just didn't take the same cues or just didn't develop as nice a pen with this one as they did with the Energel alloy. This one is also refillable. You also pull off or turn off this front piece. And this is not pressure fit. So we see a really nice hefty spring in there. And then the refill, uh, the refill is a little shorter. So let's just do a quick comparison here. So it's actually refills a lot shorter. It's like an inch and a half shorter. So same ink, different refill. I don't have the packaging, so I can't tell you the name of this refill. But if you were to cut down the longer refill, you could put it in place of this one. So from a size perspective, the pens are above average, but they're not gigantic. Here it is relative to a Jetstream Sport, which is a pretty standard ballpoint style or gel pen, whatever. Uh, it's obviously a ballpoint, but it's about the same size of a, as most pens. These are a little bit larger, and Pentel tends to do that from time to time. Like I said, the Energel alloy and the Energels themselves are all quite large pens. So we have the executive version, the standard version. Between the two, I actually have to say I prefer writing with the standard one. It has this rubberized grip here, which I actually find to be more comfortable than the sort of metaled, dimpled grip. The metaled grip is just a little bit slippery for me. It looks pretty cool, but I don't find that it, uh, it really handles that well. Again, it just it's just sort of slippery. So uh, while I like that they released the executive pen, I haven't really found it, found it to be that appealing. Uh, it is a good deal heavier, so if you're looking for a heavier pen, uh, this may be the way to go. But I will say that the, uh, the standard one is more comfortable for me. The best comparison I've found between the GlideWrite is the, between the GlideWrite and some other pens on the market, that is to say, is the Pentel, sorry, is the Pilot Acro. So here's the Pilot Acro 300. It's a pretty affordable pen with a uh, ballpoint style ink, a modern low vis viscosity ballpoint style ink. And it's sort of, to me, like a classier, cooler looking version of the GlideWrite. GlideWrite Glide right is more what you'd see in a, you know, like a supermarket style mainstream pen, while the Acro has a uh, just a really cool styling. It is a Japanese pen. So uh, I guess it's kind of this is the classic version and it has this, uh, you know, kind of minimalist aesthetic that you might find with Japanese pens. And then there is the Acro Ball, which would be a direct comparison to the Glide Rider. I don't have an Acro Ball handy, but the styling is more in line with the Glide Rider or the Glide Right rather. It has uh, the Acro Ball has the sneaker style grip and the plastic body. So that is probably a pretty close comparison. But the Acro Ball doesn't have an executive style pen. It has a premium, but it's not a true executive style pen, whereas the Acro does. And that's called the, uh, goes from the Acro 300 up to the Acro 1000, which is a fully metal executive style pen. And this one sells for about $10, maybe $9, $10. So it would be a pretty close comparison to the Glide Right. Uh, you know, styling wise, you could see they're quite similar. The Glide right is a good deal larger. This one is uh, definitely more minimalist. The Acro 1000 is more minimalist and thinner. Uh, but I would say on the whole, a much better looking pen than the uh, than really anything I find in the Pentel line. But that's just me. So I just wanted to do a quick writing sample between the three low viscosity ballpoint pens. Again, we have the Glide right, the Jetstream, and then the Acro 300. Start off with the Glide right. Really smooth, really, really smooth, really dark ink. It's really quite nice. Uh, it's really, uh, I think a lot of people are going to pick the, this pen up and really feel like they're quite impressed with it, especially considering that Pentel is more known for their gel inks than they are for their ballpoint stylings. Moving over to the Jetstream. Again, also really smooth, not quite as smooth as the Gliderite, but you have a really nice dark ink from that Jetstream. Again, you can see that's a really nice dark black. Here's a great blue. The Jetstream blue is one of my favorites. And this is the 1.0 millimeter, to be fair. So 
Uh, it is a match for the Gliderite, which is also one that millimeter, but the jet stream is typically seen in a 0.5 or 0.7 millimeter ink. So it's not maybe what you'd expect from a jet stream. Lastly, we have the Acro. And this one is only a 0.5 millimeter, so it's a good deal thinner. And uh, also nice and dark. Really nice, clean writing. Not quite as smooth as the other two, but the Acro ink isn't sold in a 1.0 millimeter, so it's not even going to be an apples to apples comparison. It is quite smooth for a 0.5 millimeter ballpoint, but uh, it's, I would say, not really in the same class as the other two. It is the same sort of ink, but it just aimed at a different part of the market. Uh, if I could track one of these down at 0.7, it would be a better match. Again, I don't think it's sold in 1.0 millimeter. So basically where it comes down to it is the GlideWrite is super smooth and really comfortable to write with and just a really nice ink overall. You get a little bit more smudge than I would expect from some of the other ones, but it's really not that bad overall. Uh, and it does wear out a little bit more quickly with the ink is slightly higher viscosity, sorry, slightly lower viscosity than the other ones. The uh, Jet Stream, I'd say, is still the gold standard. Really smooth. Maybe not quite as smooth as the GlideWrite, but great overall. And then you have, I would say, the best reliability and the best colors from the Jet Stream. And the Acro is excellent overall. Uh, but it is a, for me, it's a third place as far as the ink quality goes. I just really like their pen designs the most. The whole Acro line is really quite nice. So... That is a quick summary of the Pentel GlideWrite and the Pentel GlideWrite Executive. Really nice pens. I would say definitely under-recognized within the marketplace and worth checking out. Uh, I would say get a quick, uh, you know, six-pack or four-pack or whatever of the standard GlideWrite. I think it'll cost you like maybe six, seven bucks around there. It's pretty affordable. You could buy it all over the place, Amazon, uh, what have you. If you want to upgrade, there is the Executive. I think it's nice. It's just not as good as a lot of the other executive pens on the market. Uh, so this isn't one that really I'll f see. I would foresee myself using a whole lot, but I will be using the GlideWrites and enjoying them. Pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.